the new CDC boss's strategy for making COVID policy? Well, apparently she'd phone a friend. Mandy Cohen is the newly appointed director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Last year, she explained her process during a seminar at Duke University. You got to see this. Let's watch. So I would call, probably the person I called most was the Secretary of Health and Human Services in Massachusetts. She worked for a Republican governor just to, um, but you know, when she was like, are you, are you gonna let them have professional um, uh, football? And I was really like, nope. And she's like, okay, neither are we, neither are we. Uh, <laughs> so um, so uh, you know, it was like conversations like that. So, or, or I'd be like, so when are you gonna think about lightening up a mess? They're like, so you're like, next Monday. I'm like, okay, next Monday. President Biden installed Cohen, who was formerly North Carolina's Health and Human Services Secretary, to lead the CDC following Rochelle Walensky's exit. Now, Cohen appeared to make light of the decision-making process with regard to COVID, which may not bode well for the administration and the CDC in salvaging the public's trust in the agency for its various missteps and outright wrong conclusions about COVID and about uh, various policies. Yeah, that was a grading video to watch. <laughs> like, you're just going to ask somebody else? I mean, this is what it, we're all frustrated about. And also, if you're asking other and you're not asking the people what they want. You're not asking families what they're comfortable with. You're asking another health official, you know, what in your own your fiefdom you're decreeing. Um, well, and, and these are these are all the people who are like most risk averse by nature because they're health officials. Right. So I don't think that the answer is like asking families, but if they're going to be asking us to do things that are restrictions on our ability to have sports and go into public and eat at restaurants and, and significant civil liberty restrictions, in some cases, people even getting fired from their jobs for not wanting to be compliant with certain policies, then you should know what you're doing. My problem isn't that she didn't you know, that she had to call someone else for advice, but that there was an, a generalized understanding that no one really knew what to do in some of these instances, that they were all playing it by ear and coming to consensuses on policy that weren't based on solid medical foundations, but on your best guesstimate. And at the same mm -hmm. time they were doing that, they were publicly facing the public and saying, we know confidently for sure that you yes. must do this or else you're going to kill your grandmother. And it's the gap between those for two sure. positions that is so frustrating. I understand not having experience with a pandemic of this nature and trying to make it up as you go along and trying to do what you think is in the best interest of the public. But that is not how it was presented to the public. The public wasn't trusted. And that fact has now created a atmosphere of mistrust of the agencies that are, frankly, our last line of defense when something really bad does happen. And, also, and the CDC, again, is supposed to be an advisory role. There, what she was saying there wasn't what we're going to recommend is the best practices for holding sports events, whether we're going to let them happen. Mm -hmm. You get to let them happen? You, a low-ranking health bureaucrat, get to decide what people do? It's, it's, not, it's supposed to be you're giving advice. Well, I do think, didn't she say that she was talking to someone who was working um, for the governor of Massachusetts, Republican governor, yeah. who, was, who was, they were all trying to workshop it together, and that she, yeah. in her capacity of the governor's office, was what was, who was going to decide that it's going to happen was a, But I think that person was... A equivalent to her and Ray, like a like a health official. I mean, appointed by the governor, so in the administration. But advising the, the governor, governor, I presume, right. who does have, I mean, he is the one in the position to say we can or cannot let this happen. Whether or not I mean, in should. some, in some, it, it, this depended state by state basis, but in some municipalities, in, some, in like the the. Uh, I, I, I do this radio show sometimes. It's LA based, mm -hmm. and there it's a conservative radio show, so they hated all the you know health uh, mandates. And it, but it was the health official there was just was acting totally had like total authority to act on her own. It was not just she was advising a mayor or a county official or a statewide official. She was just in charge, and it was not. Mm -hmm. And and it was. And she had the most like stridently like pro keeping everything closed, pro keeping everything yeah. mass required, and it was not it was not just oh yeah I, I get to tell some official and then they implemented right. well, she had that power. It's a distinction without a difference in large part because people who are the ones in actual control are relying they they don't want to make the decision. Nobody wants to make the decision because there are lay Barbara people Ferrer, who don't that was know. Her name. Barbara Ferrer. Oh, pe Go people ahead. people don't know the answer. So they, they are going to basically take advisory opinions as edict because yeah. what what's the alternative? I can sit here and say, well, I don't have to do what my doctor tells me, but am I really gonna, gonna say, well, I know what's better for my health treatment if I have a bad ailment versus my doctor? No, right, I'm but probably your doctor gonna doesn't get defer. to force you to, 
you know, no, but eat the, more uh, veggies, But in right? this situation, the doctor is the CDC. Now, well, I might and they have, do have that power, which no, is what I, we're disagreeing. Right, but I'm saying that the, the, the people in power chose. They weren't forced by the CDC. The CDC, Fauci is right about this. The CDC didn't force anybody to do anything. Local, go- But I'm saying that it's a distinction of the difference if local governments, basically yeah. because of their unwillingness yes. to overrule what they think is sound medical advice and a scientific advice, to go on their own way. So how do you resolve that? I think that part of the, the, the real problem here is not that the CDC like secretly had all this control, because they didn't. It's that the CDC actually did not make decisions in some cases based on sound medical device, uh, advice, but they represented that, that they did. That's the misrepresentation. That's the problem. So if, if the people in charge, if you know uh, yeah, Charlie Baker, whoever it is we're talking about, the governor of Massachusetts, decided that realized that the CDC didn't really know any better than him, then he might feel more comfortable making, let's say, a political decision instead of an ostensibly scientific one or medical one. Sure. They didn't have formal power, but they were treated like what it should have been is just their, you know, the, the health expert community is one interested party with some expertise to offer. And so is, uh, you know, a bunch of other voices in the room and the political official who's elected mm-hmm. and is accountable to the people you know, weighs all these various things. Yeah. And and you're right that Fauci did, at least early on, said that a bunch of times. He said, well, I'm just telling Trump what I think from that from the health perspective. But, you know, he has to he, he's hearing from his economic experts and his hopefully his civil liberties experts and his about what is actually legal. Sure. And I'm just one voice in the room and he makes the decision. And Fauci was he was a more likable figure at the beginning when it was clear he was clear that that was what his role was. But over time and, and you're right, maybe we should we should we should be mad at the politicians for allowing, for just saying, well, we're well, just going to do what the CDC says, period, but not, forever. I'm not mad at the CDC or any of these health officials for getting it wrong, for not knowing. I'm mad at them for representing that they knew factually, without yeah. hesitation, that they were doing it I mean, I'm right mad at them. Eventually, they start, you know, picking studies that better fit, even, you know, the evidence is mixed on how well, like, having a mask mandate in a school, if it's actually keeping cases down, and here's a study that says, eh, and here's a study that says, eh, and they're saying, oh, we love this study, and we're just going to ignore that. Sure. I think that they should be more transparent about their decision-making. Yeah. Because, look, if, if my doctor says to me, look, it's a toss-up, 50-50 chance you would take this treatment or that treatment, I don't know what I would do in this situation, so it's really what you're most comfortable with, given the side effects or the consequences of each, each path. Then I feel like he's been, you know, she or she has disclosed to me my options and I can make an informed choice. If my doctor does not say that to me, has a personal preference and imposes it on me, and then I later find out that he really wasn't that sure, that she really didn't know the answer, that she just wanted to hurry me out of her office, well, then I'm going to be upset. And it's not because, you know, it's, it's, it's not because of the power that she had over me. It's because she represented to me that there was more confidence in her analysis than there actually was. And as, as I sat next to you this past year and heard all of the criticism of what happened during COVID, it does seem to me over and over again that transparency is a fundamental issue. And it's similar yeah. with the, some of the social media aspects sure. of the COVID situation. People just didn't know. But as soon as we got the discourse about you got to get the vaccine because it's going to save your grandmother. It was, I think a lot of the mistrust came around the, the, um, transmissibility narrative because they knew the CDC and everybody that apparently they came to the conclusion that the, the the way to get people compliant was to oversell the vaccine, that it wasn't just about your personal benefit from the vaccine. It was about the community benefit. That was the right. And that was the basis of the mandate policy. Exactly. That was the intellectual undergirding of overriding a very serious, Right, that should be your right to choose whether, you know, you put this substance in your body. And leaning into that so hard. At the same time, underplaying, even when it was it was becoming increasingly obvious that you had some degree of protection from a prior infection, which yes. really got downplayed, including by Fauci. Yes. That's among his top uh, miscalculations. I, I don't know if he knew better and was being untruthful or he was just wrong or he was missing what a lot of scientific, credible scientific experts, not, you know, career contrarian people saying that, well, of course there's going to be some kind of protection. And and I will say it wasn't just liberals um, politicizing this. Part of why they felt the need, wrongly, but part of why they felt the need to be so inflexible and inaccurate about what was going on with transmission was because there was a cohort of a Republican 
commentariat who was saying that vaccines absolutely aren't helpful at all, that they don't even protect you, that that getting COVID was as good as being vaccinated, which is is a, a, a dangerous quantity, is a dangerous proposition, mm -hmm. especially if you're older and could right. and people were at the time in large numbers dying from COVID. Right. So it's great if you can survive COVID and right. have the like antibodies. It is, it's a little bit, it is protective, but you have to actually get COVID to do, you have to do the thing you're hopefully trying to get protection against. Right. Um, which right. was, that was a little backward. Right. So both of those things happened like no at the same time. No one should aspire to get sick. No, yeah, it, getting sick is not Exactly. A good and so people thing. were forced into these respective corners, neither of which were accurate, which is a real shame. Um, and I think we're still dealing with the consequences of that. Yeah. Well, we will have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.